It's been 1,500 days of using Anki and a little over 4 years since I got started with learning Japanese. And to this day, I still haven't skipped a single day of learning, so the last time I did not learn Japanese was in 2018. 600 days after I got started, I made a video documenting my Japanese journey thus far, after which in 2021, I made a 3 year update video, and since it's the 4th year now, it means that it's been exactly 1 year since the last update. And while I wouldn't say that I did anything special this year, regardless, it has probably been the most productive year thus far. For example, in the last year's update video, my Japanese vocabulary consisted of around 8200 words. And now, that number is 15,500, which means that only in one year I've nearly doubled the vocabulary that took me three years to build. To further signify how big of a jump that is, last year I said that I'll most likely only go for around 10,000 words, after which I'll decide if I'll take a break, slow down, or stop sentence mining entirely. I also said that ideally I'd go for around 12,000, or at most up to 15,000 words, but I felt like sentence mining 20 cards a day was getting a bit too difficult and I wasn't sure if I could put up with it for so long. But of course, now I've already passed the 15,000 words, and unlike the expectation I had at the time about 15,000 being the ultimate goal, I'm still sentence mining daily despite having already hit the 15k mark. And there were a few reasons for why I was able to suddenly keep going for so much longer than I expected. One of them was just my Japanese improving and therefore I was able to unlock and enjoy a wider range of content, but the biggest reason by far was most likely the fact that I started using Migaku for sentence mining who were also kind enough to sponsor this video, which I don't mind at all as Migaku is something I actually use every single day for learning Japanese and I've been doing so for over 8 months now. The main reason for why I was considering stopping sentence mining in the first place was because the labor of mining 20 new cards a day with the method I was using before felt too tiring, which is why it was really overwhelming when I thought about having to keep doing that grind for at least another 350 days. But then I started using Migaku, which made sentence mining so much more enjoyable, and those 350 days went by like nothing. My new goal is to hit 20,000 words, which will definitely take me at least another 230 days or so, but that doesn't feel overwhelming at all anymore, because with Migaku, sentence mining is so much less labor intensive, so most of the time I'm just enjoying content in Japanese and occasionally just pressing a button to automatically mine a card. Since a lot of people were asking how I actually use Migaku, I also made a video on my second channel which walks you through the exact process of how I set it up and how I personally use it for mining YouTube videos, Netflix, blog posts, Wikipedia pages, and so on, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Migaku also has some other useful features such as a Japanese pitch accent trainer, which is a really great tool for getting yourself familiar with and training yourself to recognize pitch accent, which I definitely recommend checking out. Hinikuna. 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 There's also the Chinese equivalent for tones, all of which, including the sentence mining tools, you can gain access to if you just use my ref link in the description that also grants you one extra month for free on the purchase of your subscription. And there's also a lifetime option if you don't wanna pay monthly. And most likely, as long as I keep sentence mining, I'll also keep using Migaku, so once again, I'd like to thank Migaku for sponsoring this video. Since I have personal contact with the dev team, I know how hard they're working on Migaku, and I also know that a lot of very useful useful features, improvements, and new tools are coming in the future, so for the price, I'd personally say that it offers great value, and if you use my ref link, a part of what you pay also goes to supporting my channel, which I really appreciate, especially right now. Thanks to having done so much sentence mining this year, I also racked up quite a lot of hours of immersion. In total, I tracked 440 hours in the past 12 months. Which is actually less than last year, because in 2021, I tracked around 490 hours of immersion only from May to October alone. But most of those hours came from the summer challenge where I attempted to learn Japanese for at least 5 hours a day, and also 190 of those hours came from passive listening, aka listening to podcasts passively while doing other activities. In the past 12 months however, I've only tracked around 15 hours of passive immersion, because I kinda just didn't feel like tracking it anymore despite occasionally still doing it, and overall I've under-tracked my immersion by quite a lot. 
I'm not sure by how much exactly, but I probably underchecked at least 100 hours minimum, and I'd also say that the quality of immersion this year was probably higher compared to last year as well, once again making it the most productive year thus far. But when it comes to the total time I've spent on learning Japanese from the beginning, last year I estimated that number to be around 1750. And now, if I put all the numbers together again, I get around 1000 hours from tracked immersion, 1500 hours from monkey, and probably if I take all the other resources I've used, as well as all the untracked immersion, I'd estimate that I'd get at least another 400 hours, making my current total time spent on learning Japanese around 2900 to 3000 hours. Just to put that into perspective, it means that if learning Japanese was a video game, it will probably be my third most played game. It also means that I've been studying, including immersing, for almost two hours a day since I got started, which is really not that much when you think about it as it hasn't required all that many sacrifices, especially since hundreds of those hours came from moments where otherwise I'd just be idling. I also think the fact that I didn't have to make that many sacrifices to get to this point is also the reason why I've had a wholly positive experience with learning Japanese to this day. And even though those 3000 hours can sound like a lot, it's not even close to the hours I've spent on my most played games, yet it means that now I've entered the same ballpark of hours as is displayed on the JLPT wiki page to be the average study time for passing JLPT N1. Last year, I managed to get only two answers wrong on the N2 mock exam that I tried on video, but I don't really feel too confident confident that the same thing is going to happen with N1 that I'll be trying later in the video. Despite being over 5000 words above the estimated N1 vocabulary requirement, I've never optimized my learning towards JLPT, and N1 is brought to the extent that I could easily be faced with concepts that I've never encountered in my immersion that may end up being fatal. That being said though, my Japanese has improved a lot compared to last year. Not only in the quantifiable sense, but I also genuinely feel like my Japanese has improved, which is a pretty big deal because the more advanced you get, the harder it becomes to notice progress because every improvement becomes exponentially more subtle and less significant. I also feel more confident with a wider variety of content. Up until this point, I had mostly been immersing with and sentence mining from anime as it generally has clear and well articulated Japanese with manually created subtitles which makes it more accessible even at lower levels. I mined nearly 5000 cards from anime, but at the end of February this year I started mining mostly from YouTube. And the Japanese in YouTube videos had always been significantly more difficult compared to anime already from the fact that the speech is more natural, meaning that words are occasionally slurred or cut off and presented with not the best audio quality either. Not to mention that most of the time YouTube videos will only have automatically generated subtitles which are very often inaccurate, meaning that you have to know when the subtitles are wrong and what the correct version is, making the level of entry for YouTube for both immersing and sentence mining much higher. But alas, by now, I've made over 4700 cards in total from YouTube and other non-anime content. And I really feel like the moment I started sentence mining from YouTube, it brought about yet another phase in my Japanese learning journey. At first, I was just doing the court to K6 Gerek, then I started sentence mining mostly from anime, and now I'm finally in the phase where I'm focusing on mining from YouTube. And I've really been enjoying this phase for multiple reasons. First of all, the reason I started learning Japanese had actually nothing to do with anime, in fact, before I started even learning, I had only watched around 3 anime series in total, all of which only had one season. But by now, I've already watched a total of 32 series and 2 movies, for which I already had immersion in mind as I started watching them after I had started learning Japanese. Of course, I don't regret any of it as it was fun as well, but the point is that just like I described in the first video, what motivated me to get started and stride towards fluency was mostly internet-based content rather than anime because I wanted to discover and explore what the internet culture is like in a mysterious dimension made inaccessible by a language barrier. And when I finally started mining YouTube this year, it indicated that I had reached a level where I was able to actually start doing that and while for the most part my immersion has still been objective in the sense that my aim is to improve my Japanese rather than to have fun, it's still been a fun and a light-hearted experience, but also an eye-opening one. It's been eye-opening in the sense that the Japanese internet culture truly is pretty different compared to the Western world. I'm not going to go in depth about it, nor even try to explain it, because I'll leave that for you to discover for yourself, but for me, it truly did put into perspective how what people value, how they behave, and how they put on airs is so much to do with the very specific shared culture and the social conditioning of it rather than some inherit human nature which I am very glad I was able to see and verify with my own eyes. 
Of course, this doesn't only apply to Japan or Japanese, but it truly can be like experiencing a different world and it's hard, if not impossible, to understand exactly what I mean if your experience is limited to a single language which brings with it certain types of connotations that shape your perception to fit through the lens of the culture that shape your present values and worldview. Although, there is a pretty big chance that even if you do end up learning the language, you'll still look at everything through that previous lens without broadening or challenging it. Which is why, regardless, I'd recommend building your mental framework by starting from nothing, completely void of any preconceived human-made notions, concepts or conditionings which will then allow you to see reality in a more objective, material manner instead of through your own subjective or the collective intersubjective biases of others. This is of course much harder to do than it sounds, especially for people who tend to attach more onto what's valued by the group rather than basing their actions on their own reasoning and that's exactly what I think learning a new language can be valuable for. It may lead you to discover how completely different the culture and values of hundreds of millions if not billions of people can be compared to the values that you accepted as general truths which upon gaining a new perspective into by learning a language you might start questioning or challenging. And these are the types of things that can bring out the true value of language learning. While they are by no means quantifiable, despite me having a mindset that tends to lean towards practicality and utility, it's genuinely hard for me to consider the journey I've had thus far a waste of time as it has undoubtedly given me additional perspectives into certain phenomena even if said phenomena have nothing to do with the language nor its origin. Of course, no two experiences will be exactly the same, meaning that depending on the person, none of these things might even be relatable, but it's not meant to be relatable for the very same reason. For example, I like comparing my current Japanese learning to the time I learned English. Back then, I mostly learned just by having fun and watching YouTube videos, but over time, as I got more fluent and older, I started instead focusing on the educational value of what I watched as I optimized to use my time as efficiently as possible, meaning that now I pretty much didn't consume content for any other purpose or at least tried not to. With that in mind, you can also probably tell why throughout my videos I'm seemingly always questioning whether or not learning Japanese is a good use of my time as I started learning after I was already conscious of whether or not what I'm doing at every moment is the most impactful thing I could be doing. But somehow I managed to keep learning and I don't even question whether or not it's worth it anymore because now I know that the value it gives is so unquantifiable and unpredictable that it's not even so much about whether or not it's worth it but more about whether or not you wanna keep going. And personally, I do want to keep going because learning Japanese is almost like an excuse to once again have fun instead of always optimizing for what's most valuable. Just like I accidentally learned English, I'm now reliving it by instead doing that through Japanese, which is why I say that the journey of everyone is quite different, and I actually think that's a really nice thing about learning a language because you genuinely won't know what you'll gain without actually seeing for yourself. Anyway, I definitely do enjoy immersing with YouTube, but for now, I'm still considering it to be a type of grind because most of the time, I'm still focusing on sentence mining. And while I obviously could stop sentence mining and using Anki entirely and just learn through immersion, I still decided that I'll go for 20,000 words because I still feel noticeable benefits from mining and adding new words to Anki. For example, it's still not too uncommon for me to mine a new word and see the same word in a completely different video on the same day, so it remains true that the biggest issue with my Japanese comprehension is still just a lack of vocabulary. Now, don't get me wrong, in the sense that with 15,000 words, my comprehension is high. On average, for most YouTube videos I watch, it's almost always over 99%, and it's not too uncommon for me to watch a 20 minute video, understand all of it, without finding a single new word, which can actually be really painful if I just wanna go to sleep and still have 20 new cards I need to mine. But that's just a good example of why having a daily sentence mining goal is a genuinely good way to stay consistent and guarantee linear progress. I can easily imagine that if I no longer did Anki nor sentence mining, on the days where I'm really busy or tired, I'd most likely cut my immersion short, which means that the rate at which I'd be progressing would be really inconsistent and possibly even quite slow. However, if I aim for 20 new cards a day, it means that I'm forced to immerse enough to actually find them, and the content also has to be challenging enough for me to learn new words from. That being said though, in a way, that daily goal is limiting me because it also means that my entire Japanese time budget is going towards sentence mining and Anki. I can't really watch content such as movies that don't have Japanese subtitles, play Japanese games, nor even practice output because if I did, I just wouldn't have enough time for sentence mining or for doing my reviews. Although, I think that's still fine for now, but it's also the reason the goal is 20,000 words because at some point, increasing your vocabulary truly does start hitting diminishing returns and eventually, I do want to start 
start focusing on other aspects of the language as well. And once I finally do hit 20,000 words, that's when the real fun begins because while it means that I'll probably still be doing my Anki reviews for at least another year or two, I won't be adding any new cards, so the time Anki takes will start dropping rapidly, eventually probably down to just 5 minutes a day, and since I won't be doing any sentence mining anymore either, I'll be 100% free to consume whatever content I please because I don't need to worry about finding or extracting new words. As of right now, it's only going to take me around 200 days until I reach 20k, aka I'll be done at around the beginning of June 2023. And I honestly can't wait because while it might sound like an exaggeration, it's most likely going to be life changing. The reason why is because I've been using Anki every single day for over 1500 days, averaging about 1 hour a day, but if that then drops down to only 5 minutes a day, I'll be having a lot more extra time, energy and freedom. Which means that I can spend more time immersing, or perhaps put some extra time into other projects I've been wanting to work on, or even just come in contact with more greenery, but one thing is for certain, which is that it also means that I'll finally be able to dedicate some time on proper output practice, aka speaking and writing Japanese. I still haven't done pretty much any output practice for reasons I've explained numerous times in previous videos, but basically I'm prioritizing improving my comprehension as that's what I'm first and foremost interested in, and regardless output practice becomes so much easier when you're pretty much fluent anyway, so I personally haven't deliberately forced myself to practice output when I don't really want to. But despite that, due to all the extra input I got this year, my output has most likely improved quite a lot compared to last year when I tried speaking Japanese for pretty much the first time, and I plan on doing the same thing in this video, so I'm not going to go more in depth about output until I actually do that. Instead, I want to try describing what it actually feels like to know around 15,000 words, or to have around 3,000 hours of exposure to Japanese, which is something I personally would have liked to know some years ago. I think the most common question most people would have is whether or not I'm finally quote-unquote Fluent. And while thus far I've always said no, I honestly can't really say that anymore. Disregarding output, I'd say that in terms of comprehension, by most people's standards, in many ways, yes, I am fluent. Like I said, for most content, for example for YouTube videos, I genuinely do get 99 plus percent comprehension, quite often even 100%. I can watch most videos and live streams without any subtitles, and the same goes for most TV shows and anime. Generally, when presented with any form of Japanese, my first intuitive assumption is that I'll most likely understand it. For example, even if I have my phone or computer set to Japanese and suddenly need to do something important such as make an international payment, I can still understand to the extent that I don't need to switch the UI back to a different language. And generally, the same applies to things such as the news, comments, text chat and so on, and when I truly am missing a word or two, most of the time I can still figure out the meaning from context or just by looking at the kanji. However, while I do think that it's objectively correct to say that I am fluent by most people's standards, I'm obviously not completely fluent. Not every piece of media is the same level of difficulty, and occasionally I'm still met with Japanese that's just completely beyond my level, either because it requires incredibly advanced or field-specific vocabulary, or it's filled with cultural references and assumes knowledge that I just don't have due to not being grown up in that environment. I mean, imagine entering the western internet in 2022 without having seen a single meme or movie or knowing a single band and so on, meaning that you pretty much won't understand a single reference. And very often, I still need to to look up words that I've already learned because I either forgot them or the word has a completely different meaning in that specific context so I'll still have to look it up to make sense of it. And of course, using Japanese subtitles still increases my comprehension as it allows me to see the kanji and to not miss anything by relying just on listening. I occasionally still use subtitles in English as well, but in general I wouldn't say that I'm even close to being as fluent in Japanese as I am in English and I'm definitely nowhere near native level. And keep in mind that for now I'm only talking in terms of understanding understanding, not speaking or writing. But is any of this really surprising? I mean, sure, I've been learning Japanese for 4 years, averaging about 2 hours of learning plus immersion a day, but when I compare it to my English, I've been quote unquote learning English for over 14 years. And I also had English classes in school for around 10 years, and I most certainly got way more hours of daily English immersion during those 14 years compared to what I've been getting with Japanese, in fact, I'm still averaging more hours of English exposure than Japanese exposure on a daily basis. So if you compare it like that, then the 4 years I've been learning Japanese 
Chinese 4 truly feels like nothing. I mean, I literally have more than twice the hours in both RuneScape and League compared to what I put into learning Japanese, and in terms of my Japanese output, I've only done around 15 hours of output practice since getting started anyway. And I mean, I occasionally still encounter words that I don't know in English either. For example, recently I was immersing with a Japanese Let's Play video, and I wasn't really sure what Chancery meant when I saw the word in-game. But generally, even if I miss a word or two in English, I usually just derive their meaning from context so I can just keep watching. Meaning that while there will always be words that I won't know, at some point they just won't really be a problem anymore. And if you take all of these things into consideration, I'm actually really happy with my current level of Japanese. I definitely don't feel that my level is too low compared to the time and effort I've put in, especially since I didn't sacrifice everything else to get to this point. I also don't feel any burnout and I'm excited to keep on learning and improving my Japanese, not just for the short term, but I'm also looking forward to reaching milestones that are hundreds of days away, which will then allow me to just keep on learning, but in a different way. That's why I'm always feeling like I'm just getting started and this is just the beginning, because while learning has progressively only gotten more and more enjoyable, I still haven't even reached the fun part yet. Meaning that while I'm not at the level that I'd like to reach yet, I mean, I'm not even sure if I can even pass in one, and anime such as the Dummy Galaxy are still pretty hard, it doesn't even bother me because considering how much I have to look forward to, I'll eventually get there and I already know that I'll be enjoying the process probably even more than I am now. With all that said, I think it's finally time to go ahead and try the final JLPT mock exam that I'll most likely ever try on this channel. Okay, it's, it's green. <sighs> okay, so at first it's just kanji and vocabulary stuff. It's probably this. Yay. Epic. I learned this word from Gekkan Teki Nai Otoko. I even remember the sentence. Epic. Okay, epic. It's a grammar question. These are the hardest for me by far. Okay, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, the first one was correct. But I thought the Kyo Koso would be at the end, not before Katasuke yo. Okay, it's reading time. Okay, I finished reading it. It was pretty understandable. Epic. I honestly can't remember if this is kanja or if it's kusha, but it's probably kanja. Yay, epic. This word was in Hikaru no Go. Okay, let's see. Epic. I feel like the answer is number three. Epic. Okay, now it's this thing, I guess. I think it's number four. Okay, epic. Oh no, more reading. <laughs> It's most likely going to be the second answer. Epic. Okay, I think it's 2 aka 3. Let's see. Epic. This test is pretty exhausting for sure. Okay, listening time. Okay, I listened to it once and it's most likely going to be number 3. Epic. Okay, I listened to it once and I think it's number three. Epic. Okay, I listened to it once and I'm pretty sure it's the first one. Okay, epic. Uh, okay, let me think. Okay, it's like kind of confusing. It's either two or three. Okay, it was number three. Uh, like I expected, it was either number two or three. My first guess was my first guess was number three. ちょっと高めみたいだけど。いや、僕は美容効果の方がいいよ。この男の人はどの重曹を飲もうと考えていますか？Okay, I listened to it once. Going for green, and I'm going for two, aka purple. Oh man, wait, what? Alright, so that was the entire N1 mock exam, and these are my results. I got 4 mistakes, 2 of them from grammar questions and the rest from listening, but honestly, I really feel like these last 2 listening mistakes should not have happened. The reason why is because both of them were actually really easy for me, as I understood and picked up the Japanese pretty much perfectly on the first try. 
However, question 18 was a little bit tricky in the sense that you had to pay really close attention to exactly what was being said instead of taking it literally and answering at face value. I chose my answer based on what made perfect sense in the context that I had in my head, which is why I was a little bit surprised when it came out that it was wrong, but when I rechecked the dialogue just one more time, it was clear that I just kinda stepped into my own trap of not paying enough attention. And as for question 17, I also understood the Japanese on the first listen no problem, but the issue was that even though I almost went with the right answer pretty much right away, for some reason the answer felt kinda out of place, maybe because of the tone that it was said with relative to what the guy in the dialogue was feeling, and I started overthinking it and even though the second answer logically speaking still didn't make sense, for some reason I still chose that instead of the answer that I both originally and in hindsight felt was correct. And I really don't know why I did that. Maybe it happened because I took the test when I was already really tired and just wanted to go to sleep, but it was a really good opportunity to just get it done and over with, which is why I still ended up taking it and perhaps I couldn't focus all that well. So even though I did get those two questions wrong, I don't really feel defeated by them because they still felt really easy and those kinds of mistakes can even happen in my native language if I don't pay enough attention. However, the grammar questions that I got wrong, I accept as true mistakes because I admit that my understanding or memory of those grammar points is just not strong enough to get them correct every time if you take them out of context and put them side by side like that. However, as for everything else, such as the reading questions, they honestly didn't feel overwhelming and I felt confident when I gave my answer pretty much every time. And even though I did get those two pretty absurd mistakes on the listening section, ironically this time listening felt easier than ever before. I only needed to listen to the audio once and I pretty much instantly knew the correct answer. So while I am a bit disappointed with the two listening mistakes, overall I'm quite satisfied with the results and I feel pretty confident that I could most likely pass the real exam as well. I currently have no plans on taking the real one though, already from the fact that the test is only held twice a year and I'd either have to go to Finland or literally live in oh, Japan to take it so like we'll see if either of those ever comes true. One of the things that probably helped me a lot during the reading sections this year was the fact that I finally started doing some level of reading practice. I didn't start reading manga or novels or anything like that, but instead I read around 11 Wikipedia articles and around the same amount of blog posts which probably translates to around 25 hours of reading immersion in the past 12 months. While 25 hours is pretty much nothing in the grand scheme of things, I still feel that it gave a significant confidence boost to my reading ability, probably because my Japanese comprehension was already at a good enough level, but I just hadn't done much reading practice, so I was able to get used to reading and catch up rather quickly when I actually started doing that. The reason I decided to start reading Wikipedia instead of something potentially less dry was for the simple reason that that's just how it happened to be. I somehow ended up on the Japanese wiki page for RS and it was pretty interesting to see what was written about it in Japanese considering how completely unknown that game is in Japan. RS was also one of those things that originally had a really high impact on my English vocabulary which is also why I'm always referencing the game in my videos so it was interesting to see the in-game words such as skill names that I'm so familiar with in Japanese as well. I also ended up learning a few interesting facts about the game that I didn't know before and I was able to mine quite a lot of new words and when I finally finished reading the entire article it felt kind of satisfying to know that I'm completely done with that page now. And that led me to seek out other articles as well, such as about CS, Half-Life, American Mickey's Alice, Linux, and so on, all of which I read and sentence mined from start to finish. I also made a playlist specifically for this type of reading, which included songs similar to the one that's currently playing in the background. Usually I also read in the dark, late at night, when I was already slightly tired but still clear-headed. And this combined with the articles themselves feeling kind of nostalgic, created a rather specific type of liminal headspace that made it really easy to become absorbed in the atmosphere of what I was reading and listening to. It also felt like a trip down memory lane when I read diary type blog posts from 2010 that described mundane happenings of daily life mixed with at the time prospects of what the future might hold that by now we have already far surpassed. And even though I was never a huge fan of reading and still aren't, I plan on to keep on occasionally still doing it as I honestly feel that I'll remember the whole experience and its atmosphere even years from now which will eventually turn into a memory that I'll look back in nostalgia and comfort. いやー、久しぶりですね。1年ぶりですね。
、ついに VR チャット復活です。いやー、今年はですね、前回と違って、まあ今、全然台本とかノートなしで、この VR チャットの紹介部分をやっています。まあなんでかっていうと、やっぱりもう必要がないんです。まあ完全にぶつけ本番ですね。まあ、あれちょっと。何が言えばいいのちょっとわからないんですけど、まあ、そういう即興な実況は私にとってめ,、まあ、めっちゃ苦手ですね。私が登場したポッドキャストでもそれを見えるんですけど、いやそれはノートなしの弱点ですね。何が言えばいいのちょっとわからないんですけど、まあまあまあまあ。いや今回はですね、まあどうかな。まあ前回、昨年ですね、私の今の日本語は実はまだダメですよと言ってましたけど、まあ今年はどうかな。いやー、まあ今回の語彙力とか、聞き取り強さというか、聞き取り能力というか、まあ前回に比べたらまあ別物ですね。でもそれはアウトプットにどういう影響を及ぼせるんですかということをちょっと確かめたいと思います。まあ、ということで。ちょっと、ウィアルチャットに行ってみたいと思います。こんばんは。日本人ですか私は日本人ではありません。<笑>本当にそうなんですかうん。エストニア人です。Where from? エストニアおお,お、すごいね。初めて会いました。エストニア、ラトビア、リトアニア。そうそうそう。いやー、バルト三国ですよね。うん。はい。エストニアでのおすすめの場所はどこですかうーん。どうかなうーん。なんか田舎の場所が私のおすすめです。ああ、田舎。今、日本に。食べ物はあ、ああ、そう。日本に住んでいますか今。え、私,私がはい。はい。はい。ああ、いや、そうです。日本に住んでます。ああ、どの県ですかあ大阪ですね。ああ、大阪ですか。ああ面白い。いやー。ああ、関西弁。関西弁。いや。ケートンさんは、標準語で、それとも関西弁で話して。いますかえー、でも VR チャットしてるときは標準語かな。うん。標準語。いや、When I play VR チャット。うん、なるほど。なんか家族で関西弁ですかいや、家族も標準語ですね。いや、なんでかっていうと、親や父親も出身は大阪ではないんですよ。ああ、なるほど。標準語ではないです。標準語は喋らないけど。なんて言うんですかね薄い関西弁というか。ああ、なるほど。Yeah. まあ、北海道に、北海道に行ったことありますか北海道、いや、of course、ありますよ。ああ、まあ、私はいつか日本に来たら、ぜひ北海道に行きたい。なぜかというと、ah, まあ、yeah. エストニアに近いそうです。Yeah. でも、それは、ah, 確,か確かめたい。うん。ワーニングさんは、日本、なんでそんな日本語が標準喋れるんですかまあただ勉強していますねなんか4年前に始めました、えー、すごいでもまあなんか話しまああんまりできないは話すのは苦手ですまあ大体大体の日本語わかりますけどあんまりよく喋れませんいやすごいでも上手に喋れてますよ<笑>ありがとうねまあまあまあです<笑>これからですはい留学したことはあ,あ、ない。日本に行ったこともありません。うん、行ったこともない。えー、うん、はい。行きたいですけど。え、エストニアから日本に行くとしたら、フィンランド経由ですか多分そうです。まあ、エストニアにタリン空港から成田空港まで多分飛行できるんですけど、多分フィンランドの方が安いと思います。うん、うん、うん。いや、いいや。次の。夏ですかなどの季節が一番良いのかまだ知らない。ああ、季節ね。いや、寒いのは好きですかまあ、寒いのがもう好きです。でも、まあ、日本の私にとってあんまり寒くない。ああ。まあ、北海道、多分かなり寒いんですけど、まあ、東京とかそんなに寒くない。うん、そうですね。うん、ああ、なるほど。そうか。どの時期がいいでしょうね。まあ夏を見たいんですけど、まあみんな私にとって多分夏がちょっと暑く暑
暑いですね。いや、日本は暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。暑い。
自分の住んでいる家はどうやって温めるんですかなんか薪ストーブでそれともなんかエアコン僕の家はね、基本的にそうエアコンかな。日本のね、多分まあほとんどの人はエアコンと、まあ石油ストーブ使う人もいれば、ああまあガスファンヒーターみたいな、あああのガスで。一気に家を温めるっていう人もいて、うん、あとねやっぱり日本人だとあのこたつっていうこたつ知ってるあはいそれをね部屋の真ん中とかに置いて体入れて温めるのこんばんはこんばんは OK I just wanna quickly say that this ended up being around a 40 minute conversation but somehow my audio levels were completely messed up so most of the footage is unfortunately completely unusable as my voice was quieter than the people who were pretty far away so I had to cut it really short いやな、あわたがまだ全然ロード完成していないのでみんななんか青いロードバーですあそんなそんなそんななってんすかあはい、かなりインターネット,ネット遅い感じ。遅い、遅い、はい。あなんか携帯でマクドナルドの Wi-Fi みたいな。<笑>じゃあ、あっちの人らみんな青いバーで出てるんですけど。あはい、そういうことです。なんか日本語ってアニメとかで勉強したんですかやっぱよくある感じ。あまあ、大体 YouTube で。あでも、いや、ちょっと最初はアニメでした。はい、なんかそれ、それでよくここまで来れますよね。なんか。本当驚かされるんですよね、マジで。いらっしゃいませ、三十円目女の子います。またあの人だ。すごい勢いですね。まあ、なんか、いつもこんな感じですよね。<笑>コピー横丁って言うて。いや、多分、うん、あのね。がマンションに住んでいるなら、近所迷惑になるんかな。<笑>間違いないっすよ、近所迷惑。<笑>多分普通に通報されてると思う。釣りでもやってるんじゃねえかみたいな。<笑>あ、これこれちょっと気になったんですけど、今リナックス使ってるっておっしゃってたじゃないですか。はい、いや私は今リナックスを使ってますね。なんか使ったことあるんですけど、まあいつもちょっと問題になんかぶつかるんですから、すぐに Windows に戻ります。あ、ずっとリナックス使ってるわけじゃないんですね。なんか Windows も平行で使ってるみたいな。うん、なんか仕事にするためにリナックスって結構ね、なんかバグが多いから。あ、なんか。普段使いで Linux ってどうなのかなって聞こうと思ったんですけども、ここで答えをいただけました。もうなんか、そっか。本当にやっぱ人によるってやつ、ね。Linux 使いは Windows だから。まあ、あんまりあなんか、ただで、ブラウザー系のことをするなら、まあ、大丈夫だと思いますけど、まあ、なんか、たくさんゲームをやる。とそれともなんか動画編集とかそういうことをまあちょっと難しいというか相性が悪いあと Linux ってやっぱりあのまあ無料でできるっていうのもいいよねうんはい完全に無料ですじゃあホームレスになったら Linux かな<笑> OS は、はい、いや待てよパソコンすら買えないぞそれあー今は23時20分ちょっとすいませんちょっといい時間なんで私は寝ようと思います。お疲れ様です。おやすみなさい。ありがとうございました。バイバイ。バイバはい、皆さんどうでしたかまあ私の感想といえばですね、まあ今年の日本語は旋回に対して差は歴然です。なんでかというと、まあ自分の過ちにめっちゃ気づきます。それは本当に良かったです。なんでかというと、まあ、やっぱり自分の過ちに気づいたら成長は簡単になりますので、いや、良かったです。いや、それにしても会話は戦前できます。あんまり大した問題なく40分以上の会話ができましたので、まあ、今回のアウトプットの結果として、今の日本語は、うーん、戦前ありです。はい。いや会話が戦前できるし、大体の冗談もピンときますので、いや本当に練習なしでここまで来たのは、まあ、かなり満足しています。でも、私の日本語は戦前完璧ではありません。冗談抜きでまだまだです。練習不足ので、会話ができるにしても、不器用な日本語を使ってしまうことが多いのです。でも、それは来年の夏で取り掛かりたいので、次回はもっともっと日本語を話せるようになったことを楽しみにしています。はい、それでは、VRKV でした。じゃあの Well, that was my current Japanese. 
there's been pretty big improvements compared to last year in the sense that my recall ability has improved to the extent that conversations don't feel problematic at all anymore despite still not having done any output practice. I was able to have very long conversations about various topics and it felt rather easy to communicate whatever I wanted to say. What definitely also made this year's conversations a lot easier was the fact that I was able to pick up literally everything. I had no issues with listening or understanding the Japanese that was being said, which also goes to show that despite me almost always using Japanese subtitles during immersion, it still led to a strong enough listening ability to not have any issues in quote unquote real life scenarios. And I recommend checking out one of my previous videos where I explained why I always recommend using Japanese subtitles when available. The funny thing is that earlier in the video I showed a clip of me seeing the word Juni Toiro on two separate occasions and it actually ended up appearing in a conversation during the output segment. Which really made me feel that at the end of the day just getting enough input and building up your vocabulary truly are the two most important factors when it comes to output. While my output wasn't perfect by any means, the fact that I was able to come this far just by input alone really affirmed its value. In fact, the biggest issues I had usually only happened when I tried talking about topics that I had never encountered in my immersion before, and even if I am able to translate them to Japanese literally, sometimes the way you actually say those things in Japanese is just so different that it still won't sound right at all, and it's easy to get locked up in those situations. However, most of the time I was still able to recover and just explain it in a rather unnatural but still understandable way. That being said though, when I speak without a script, I'm often unsure if what I just said was grammatically correct and understandable, which occasionally makes me pretty uncertain and hesitate a lot when I'm speaking. And this is exactly what direct output practice will definitely help with. I often also make small mistakes here and there both grammatically and pronunciation wise, but when I watch back the footage I actually notice them myself and know how to fix them, so given enough time and practice I'd probably be able to reduce the amount of mistakes I make and also speak with a lot more confidence as I know that I'm speaking correctly. Although, I'm not going to start output practice just yet, as I still feel that getting more input and increasing my vocabulary is still giving me tremendous benefits, so I'd rather be patient and take one step at a time, meaning that for now I'll be focusing on my current goal of hitting 20,000 cards. I'm currently at around 16,200 and just like last year, I uploaded my sentence mining deck which now contains over 10,000 cards to my Patreon, which I only recommend using as a kind of dictionary so you'd be able to see whether or not I've learned some specific word that you just encountered in your own immersion. And as the final word of the video, I really hope that you enjoy your own language learning journey as much as I have. And Migaku Reflink at the bottom. Bye bye.